Do the thing you fear most, and the death of fear is certain. Mark Twain. Have you ever heard of him? Oh, yes. Also known as Samuel Langhorn Clemens. What? <laughs> Put your head in, guys. I think you're not looking. We have had a very, very chill fall break, haven't we? No, you have to look like, at the camera. Hey, hey, Hudson. Hi, Hudson. Look at the camera. So we've had a really chill fall break, huh? We've just been like at home kicking it, which has been great. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're gonna have our little outing, which is what? Um, so we're gonna get like pumpkins, like big pumpkins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I feel like my whole life I believed that I could do anything you know there was always the possibility of as a child becoming that astronaut or you know whatever dreams that people have growing up the one thing that I didn't believe that I could ever do was to be me and so by far that was my greatest fear and I was realizing this just the other day like this is the one thing that I thought I couldn't do and I did it. And it's just so crazy, like, just to look at that and go, I never in a million years did I imagine that we would be here. Yeah. And for the years that I've been on this journey with you, I think together we were, there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fear as to what this would mean, like for our family, if we would be accepted in our community. Um, so it was a lot to face all of that. But being on the other side of that, it, it really is a great feeling. Yeah, and of course, over the last few years, it wasn't just my transition, right? Really, since 2019, I feel like so much has changed, right? Because we also had a faith shift, and that was something I could never have imagined doing. Yeah, when those major things shift, you are disrupted and you have to face a lot of, of fears, existential and otherwise. <laughs> so I'm curious, what things for you that have maybe been a surprise in terms of like looking at your fears? I'm really afraid of asking for help. Yes, you are. Yeah. Well, this child is mm -hmm. so common and Amanda's a pleaser. So asking for help as a pleaser is like almost impossible. Well, because I love helping other people. When other people ask me for help, I've, I've always felt flattered and happy to help, generally speaking. But asking for help, I always felt like was a sign of weakness. So that's something I've had to get over. So what are some recent examples for you like of that? Some of them probably seem so small, but they felt like such a big deal to me. Like we love to host events, right? And people have always been super happy to help, but I'm kind of like a stubborn toddler, right? I've got this. I don't need help. I'm independent. But <laughs> the truth is that I really don't got it. <laughs> like I need help. So we hosted a shower for my sister, Stephanie, a baby shower for my sister, Stephanie, recently. And both of my sisters helped a ton with that. It was just an all hands on deck approach. And um, it was a little bit uncomfortable for me, but the shower ended up so fun. It was, it was really fun. And my first baby shower I've ever been to. Your first baby shower. And of course, I think more recently, we hosted our annual Halloween party, our Nightmare Before Christmas Haunted Mansion theme. And you having this amazing idea to go crazy with the decorations and make everything yourself. Then it got down to like several nights. And I think we we're like maybe a couple nights right before the party. But finally, we, I said, Amanda, maybe we can get some extra help to do this because we're, we're not going to make it. <laughs> And you weren't wrong. <laughs> so yeah, that was even a bigger deal, I think, than my sister's helping because these are newer friends that I have. They're all amazing crafters. 
and they were just so happy to help and they were here for hours helping me paint and it's kind of like when you have a fun theme right you know how i love a good theme then there's all these extra ideas that just keep coming and yeah there was no way that it would have been ready and it was a special experience because i feel like it makes you a lot closer to people when you allow them to help you and you plus you learn so much in the process yeah it really did turn out so good though so grateful to have our friends there to help us with this yeah So back to your fear of being yourself. Recently, you changed your gender marker in court. I did. And that wasn't actually as scary as I thought it'd be. <laughs> and honestly, the biggest reason for me doing this is I got so sick of looking at my driver's license that was due to expire from 10 years ago and thinking, I have to go renew it. There's no way I'm going to get my picture taken looking like this. With the wrong gender marker on yeah. it. I signed up to meet in front of the judge. It was a good experience. He was a really kind judge and he smiled at the end and he said, congratulations. So I was just realizing that today to the day is a year that we posted your coming out video. <laughs> when I was three, I remember understanding what gender roles were for the first time. And I had the distinct impression that part of my core identity didn't match up to who others expected me to be. If you could see then that uh, we would have done all this in a year, I don't think you would have believed it. Yeah, being in a really conservative, area in Utah, I wasn't sure if that was going to be like super awkward. And it was the opposite. It was like he went out of his way to make sure you felt supported. Oh, man. You don't know what to expect in situations like that, but I just felt like the judge was so sweet. You just like, you don't know what to expect in a place that's like more conservative like this. If people will be kind of like, oh, okay, fine. Here's the law. Like we'll allow you to change it. But he wasn't like that. He was just like, okay, here's all the questions. And then he just was like, congratulations, Miss Scott. Like, so like sincere. It was really sweet. It was also so cool when uh, that lawyer that was in the courtroom on that other case was walking out and he said, hey, I've seen your guys' videos. I didn't even know you lived here, but I'm so happy that you were able to change your gender marker. Like, good for you. And that was just kind of like the cherry on top of the cake. Well, I have to say I'm really proud of you because I think the biggest fear, like the big one was being you, right? But now like post-transition, you have choices every day about what to be, you know, little fears, things that you have to just face socially and things like that. And I feel like you've come to a point where you will not let fear rule your life. And you're like, no, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> like I just see you do that so often where you're like, let's go out or whatever. It's a normal day at Costco. So Shay has this beautiful romper on that, yes, I did make for her. Also in a romper. We're twin it to win it. <laughs> Victorious yet again, not the easiest thing. I did it. We went, you did it. we went to Costco. That was good. <laughs> I think that's a really great way to live life. You know, and it's also something that people often say to me, like, oh, that's so brave of you to do this. But I think everyone has that, that deep fear, whatever that story is, that they're often bound by. And for me, it was this. And to allow myself to free fall off that cliff and to realize that there is no death, that I'm still here that I'm, I'm now in a space of authenticity that I never thought I could experience has been one of the most transformative and beautiful experiences really, for, I feel like, for our family. Yep, that kind of vulnerability is like really contagious, I feel like. So it turns out you can be you. Yeah, and I love that phrase you often hear that when you are being yourself, it allows other people to do the same. Yeah.
I've, I think we've seen that played out like really literally with a lot of the people around us, which is a beautiful thing to witness. So what fear are you going to conquer next? Probably the fear of spiders. <laughs> You've gone too far. Do you not watch Arachnophobia growing up? No. You have never seen that movie? No. I. You know I'm such a baby. It like scarred me for life. It was like the jaws of our time. And the worst part is when those spiders caught on fire and they're screaming, running at the people. <laughs> that just, that pushed me over the edge. I get it. So we're going to watch that as a family. <laughs> Cheers to facing all the fears. Hey guys. Here's the pumpkins.